Alright, how's it going everyone? Today I'm going to be reviewing the MacBook Pro 13 inch versus the XPS 13 and to not keep you guys watching for the entire duration of this video, basically what it comes down to is whether you want Mac OS or Windows, it's pretty subjective on that point. I can't really let you guys know which one you should get, only you guys know which software you prefer. Personally, I prefer Mac OS, but if you guys want to know a little bit more of the finer details between these two laptops, then the rest of this video is for you. So let's get into the comparison. So starting off with the MacBook Pro 13 inch, you can get it with the i5 eighth generation. You can get it with eight to 16 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, all the way up to two terabytes. And then the higher end MacBook Pro 13 inch comes with the 10th generation i5 and i7. That one can be optioned up to 16, all the way up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. And then the storage on that goes from 512 all the way up to four terabytes. On the XPS 13, you can get this with the i3 all the way up to the i7. The RAM is all the way up from eight gigabytes all the way up to 32 gigabytes. The storage can go from 256 all the way up to one terabyte. And then you have the Iris Plus. So with Apple's configuration, you do have to pay a little bit more premium to get that 10th generation processor, as well as that higher end storage and RAM. But with the XPS line of you definitely have a wider range of what you want to get inside of the laptop. So in terms of hardware, I wanna give it over to the XPS 13, just because you are getting more value for your money at a lower price point. This also does come with the Wi-Fi 6 killer card. Not my favorite card, but it is Wi-Fi 6 nonetheless. And then we still have Wi-Fi 5 on the MacBook Pro 13 inch, even if you do pay for that $1,800 model, which kind of sucks. But if you're not taking advantage of Wi-Fi 6 yet, probably not gonna be that big of a deal for you. Now, next I wanna move over to build quality. And this is where it's kind of a tie, I wanna say. Both of these machines are built extremely well. On the outside of the Dell XPS, it's an all aluminum finish. It's completely redesigned from their previous generation. And I know I said it was a tie, but now that I've picked this up, I want to give the slight edge over to the XPS. It just looks more modern, more clean. Whereas on the MacBook Pro 13 inch, I wanna say that this build quality is also exceptional. And it's just that this design is more of a timeless feel, a classy feel, just that we've seen it for so long and not many people have been complaining about this design and it's unibody. So that's one thing that I like about the MacBook Pro 13 inch. But in terms of what's more modern, I wanna give over to the XPS 13. So next I wanna talk about ports and they're pretty much identical. So the MacBook Pro 13 inch comes with two Thunderbolt 3 ports on one side and then a headphone jack on the other. This is the base model. And then on the XPS 13, we also have two Thunderbolt 3 ports, but also a micro SD card slot. I'm pointing on the wrong side. A micro SD card slot and a headphone jack. And I want to give it over to the XPS 13, even though they are pretty much the same because the Thunderbolt port is on, uh, oops, <laughs> the Thunderbolt port is on either side and that just gives you more versatility. You're not confined to just using one side of the laptop for charging or using your ports. So ports, wanna give it over to the XPS 13. Next, I wanna talk about display and display is where I wanna give it over to the MacBook Pro 13 inch. I do like the colors. I just realized this thing was open, come on, man. I do like the colors of the XPS 13. I do think they're rich colorful, vivid, but in terms of the overall screen display, I just like that the re resolution is higher on the MacBook Pro 13 inch. Now you can get this optioned up with the 4K model, which is also touchscreen. And the problem that I have with that is that you're paying three, I think it's $300, might be 400. Um, let me see. So yeah, to get the 4K model, it is $400. And the problem I have with that is that at this screen size, you're not seeing that big of a difference. You're not taking the full advantage of what 4K has to offer and a display this small. Yes, it is HDR, yes, it is 4K on paper, but I just think in terms of the value for your money, it's not worth it. Plus you're taking a significant hit on battery life. And I think people carrying around these laptops value battery life. So I don't think that the 4K model is worth it. That being said, I do think that the full HD plus on this model looks really good, but I wanna give the display over to the MacBook Pro 13 inch. But if you do need touchscreen or you like the ability to touch your screen, you might wanna look into the XPS 13. And know that this is not the two-in-one model, so it's not going to flip all the way back, but just a food for thought. So next up is unlocking features, and this is where on paper it goes over to the XPS 13, but for me personally, I'm going to give it over to the MacBook Pro 13 inch, and I'll explain why in a second. So they both have fingerprint readers where Touch ID 
is what Apple's calling it on here. And then it's just fingerprint scanner on the XPS 13. I have found it to be much more consistent on the MacBook Pro whenever I go to touch my finger and it's just super fast. That was a horrible snap. And then on the XPS 13, it does have a fingerprint reader as well as Windows Hello. But I have found with XPS laptops, um, probably just this generation specifically, whenever it wants to unlock my face, it doesn't want to work. It always says I'm standing too close, I'm standing too far back, please type in your pin. And I always have to resort to using the fingerprint reader, but then sometimes the fingerprint reader doesn't work and then I have to type in my pin. So I've just decided that I'm going to be typing my pin from now on whenever I use an XPS, which kind of sucks because last year's model of the XPS was perfectly fine with the fingerprint reader. Um, I don't know if it's just like my complexion. I'm not, ha I don't have good lighting. Um, I have used different faces and different lighting conditions, but it still always has a problem trying to read my face. And that's just my whole rant on the Windows Hello. So on paper, unlocking features goes over to XPS 13. Me personally goes over to the MacBook Pro 13 inch, but your mileage may vary with the whole Windows Hello unlocking feature. Now this is something that people want me to bring up in my comparison videos or just my reviews in general. And the XPS 13 is in fact lighter by half a pound. Um, it doesn't seem like much like in your backpack, it's not that big of a deal, but it's definitely easier to hold the XPS 13. And overall, I just like the design of the XPS 13 more than the MacBook Pro 13 inch. This one feels more robust like a traditional laptop, but the XPS 13 just feels like I can literally pick it up and go anywhere with it. It's just so lightweight. And that's what I like about the XPS 13. So next up is the keyboard and trackpad, and this is where it's going to be a tie. And the reason why I say this is because it's more of what you prefer as your typing experience and what you like in a touchpad. Personally for me, I like the haptic touch that's on the MacBook Pro lineup. And I also like the new keyboards that they're using with the Magic Keyboards. Now, I also don't want to discredit the XPS 13 because this is a good keyboard. Um, I don't wanna say it's the best Windows keyboard because I do think that the Surface Laptop 3 and Book 3 have a better keyboard than this. But, but in terms of the size and what it's giving you, I think it's a really good keyboard. I don't think you're going to have a problem typing on either one of these keyboards. Um, the trackpad is bigger on the MacBook Pro 13 inch, but yeah, like I said, keyboard and trackpad is pretty subjective, so a tie. But there is one thing I wanna mention with the keyboard, and I've said this before with the XPS 15. I like how with the backlit keyboards on the MacBook Pro 13 inch, Apple gives you a range of how bright you want the backlit keys to be. Whereas on the XPS and Windows laptops, they don't give you a range. It's really just two or three settings. And the first one for me is always so bright that I feel like I need to have sunglasses when I use this laptop at light at night. And then the other two settings are just like a little bit dimmer than that and they're okay. But I would much prefer having a range of how bright or how dim the keyboards should be at night. So in terms of battery life, I actually did get more battery out of the XPS 13, but, and this is a big but, if you do use high performance, this puppy will drain really fast. Whereas on the MacBook Pro 13 inch, it really just depends on what applications you're using that will drain the battery. Um, if you're just like browsing the web, I can get pretty much all day on this machine and the XPS. So just keep in mind, if you do have high performance on here, you are going to get your battery drained really fast. And I also forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video because I don't really talk about benchmarks, but in terms of the performance that you get out of the XPS 13, you do get higher single core performance, but multi-core, it's pretty much the same between the two. I think this one's like 100 more points in Geekbench in terms of single core. But keep that in mind that you only get that performance when you are in the high performance mode and sometimes when you're plugged in. You're not gonna get that if you're just on the battery battery mode, power saving mode. You gotta be on best performance. I believe that's what it's called. It's the highest performance that this battery setting has to offer. So next up, I'm going to show you guys the microphone and speaker. You guys can tell me which one sounds better. And then I'll also give my comments on the speakers as well. All right, so this is the camera and microphone test for the comparison video. Um, this is me talking to the MacBook Pro 13 inch. And now this is me talking on the XPS 13. You guys can tell me which one sounds better. Um, in terms of looks and the camera quality, I wanna give it over to the MacBook Pro 13 inch. Um, the colors just look a little bit more true to life, whereas on the XPS 13, it really just looks a little bit oversaturated. And yeah, those are just my opinions on the camera quality, but they look, both look okay. <laughs> So 
So it's no secret that Apple has really good speakers in their laptops, but I think standalone, both these speakers are good for what most people are going to be using it for. With that being said, this is a comparison video and I do wanna give the speaker over to the MacBook Pro 13 inch. But like I said in the beginning of this video, it really just depends on what you want. Do you want Mac OS or Windows? And for me personally, I just find Mac OS to be more reliable. I don't use the word stable, but there's just less glitches and bugs that I find on Mac OS. Like there was one time on the XPS, my keyboard just randomly start, stopped working as well as the trackpad. And I just feel like that Windows is good on a desktop. I'm looking at my desktop right now. Windows is a fantastic desktop experience, but when I transitioned over to their laptops, I find it to be a little bit jarring. Like it's still good, but there's just a few more bugs and glitches that I don't deal with on the desktop experience. And then on Mac OS, I don't have those problems at all. It's really just a really, but I don't wanna use the word buttery smooth, but it's a pretty smooth experience when using this laptop. I don't have too many hiccups or glitches that goes on. But with all that being said, there's some people that can handle some of the glitches and hiccups that they get on Windows. Some people don't run into that. But that's going to do it for me today, guys. If you guys did enjoy the video, please make sure to subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Leave a like if you did enjoy the video. Leave comments if you have anything you want to ask me or just give more insight to other people who might be looking to buy these laptops. And as always, guys, much love. If you're wondering what to listen to on the go, check out Audible. Audible is a free app that offers thousands of titles, and each month you get a free audiobook to choose from. Audible also has podcasts, guided wellness programs, comedy, and original content. If you don't know what to listen to, check out my Amazon store and look at my Audible library in the description. I've been an Audible subscriber since 2017, and I find myself listening to books a great way to educate myself, whether it's in the shower, cooking, exercising, driving to work, or just chilling in my bed. Sign up today using my link and get a free month and book.